Hello and welcome to the big picture. Today is International Labor Day or May Day as it is known all over the world. The first May Day celebrations which took place in India was in Madras in 1923 by the Labor Kisan Party of Hindustan. Ever since, the labor movement has come a long way in India, riding through many ups and downs. Since the liberalization and globalization process was adopted in India in the early 90s, one of the biggest casualties have been the labor movement, with trade unions witnessing an alarming decline both in terms of its membership and its clout. In the last decade and more, the decline of organized labor has also had its effects on the trade unions. However, a recent study still to be authenticated by the labor ministry has, however, shown a dramatic rise in the memberships of the trade unions. In tuck, the Congress-backed union has surged ahead of the BMS, which had most membership according to the 2008 survey. Apparently, this dramatic rise is because of the change of strategy of the trade unions, which have, been a sh which have seen a shift of membership from regular to contract workers. As the labor movement grapples with the changing environment, today we will look at the challenges facing the trade unions and how they intend to tackle them on this International Labor Day. To discuss this, I have with me Mr. Bajnath Rai, Secretary General Bharatiya Mazdoor Sangh, R.C. Kuntia, Congress MP and Vice President of the Indian National Trade Union Congress, Intak, and Venkatesh Ramakrishnan, Associate Editor of the Frontline Magazine. Welcome to all of you. First, let me go to Mr. Kuntia. Mr. Kuntia, you know, Intak suddenly seems to have seen a dramatic rise but we will come to that uh, increase in memberships and all later. But on this day, on, on, on this International Labor Day, how do you see the uh, role of trade union movements in the future? Because you know, in the last couple of decades, the trade unions have seen a dramatic you know, decline in its clout. So do you see that any, anything changing in the coming years in India? Uh, in India, trade union movement as you have rightly said, uh, is not very strong. The main reason behind it is our the organized labor force in India is very less and the major portion of the labor, they are unorganized and not member of any union. They are not organized. Right. So to organize the workers is the major challenge in India. And I think uh, that is the first work of the, all the trade unions to organize the workers. And once the workers are organized and we have majority members with us, I think the trade union will have a cloud. Whatever political party may be in government, trade union have its own cloud. As, I, as you all know, as the workers, as the really the... Uh, architect of building the nation, the share they ought to get, and the wages, the salary, the fork, the benefit they should get in the globalizing world, right. it's very difficult. And the government control is gradually reducing. Right. Public sector also, instead of giving employment, regular employment to more workers, they are also taking a strategy to do the work on contractors. Right. So contractual agreement. So the security of service, service condition is being also marginalized. And as a result of which, the industrialists and employers, they are becoming more powerful. Right. Although till now in India, government has not amended the Industrial Dispute Act or Contract Labor Act, but the industrialists and the employers, they are taking the opportunity and also exploiting the workers in various fields. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Mr. Rai, Mr. Kuntia has been very frank in admitting that the labor movement has weakened. All that the trade unions had fought for in the, in the, in the you know, right through the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, the, you have lost all that which you had fought for. How do you regain that, that kind of a cloud? Or do you think it is possible to regain that cloud at all in, in the present environment which we, which we live in? It is possible because of the simple fact that the new situation has arisen due to change in the policy of the government. Right. 
the government has adopted a policy to shifting all its liabilities and responsibilities to the industrialist and to that the is private a major sector. result in private sector. So nature of employment has changed. Right. Now you see there is no issue of permanent worker. Right. There is no issue of any work which is in permanent nature. All are casualized and the government is releasing its shares from the public sector to the private sector. So it is the government which is very much responsible in intending to weaken the trade union movement. We feel so. That is why when all the trade union felt that from the three forum that is government, employer and the worker, government has taken side of the employer, then we have to do something and that was the reason why all the trade unions came together irrespective of their party and color. They held two strikes successive in 2012 and 2013. You will see... February, the, in February you had this major yes, strike. 21, 22 days. February 20, uh, 2013. It was miraculous. So it is uh, wrong to say that the Indian trade union movement has lost its energy. It has regained. And we can say that uh, government, uh, if give honor to the laws which are on the land, laws are there, but these laws are being played like a toy in the hands of the employer because there is no implementing agency. Right. If implementing agency will be harder or at least honest, I say, then there is no problem at all. The main problem that implementing the agency in the government has failed brutally, mercilessly. They are nothing doing. There is no judges in the tribunal. There is no labor commissioner who works sincerely except few. So okay. these are the implementing <laughs> process which are weakening the uh, trade union. Okay. And now we are joined in by Nilotpal Basu, the central company member of the CPIM. Nilotpal, I'd like to come to you straight away. Both, uh, I have Mr. Kuntia of the Intac and also Mr. Bajnath Rai. Both of them have frankly admitted that the trade union movement has weakened. But, you know, the question is, Mr. Rai says that it is the entire responsibility for the weakening of this movement lies with the government. Now, what are the, what are the responsibility of the trade union movements? When this changing, when, when the environment was changing in this country, do you think the trade union movements you know, there was a lapse on part of the trade union movements in adopting to the changing environment. I think <clears throat> I cannot say that uh, the situation is uh, as it was, uh, say, five years back. Um, and I should not uh, uh, attribute the situation only to this government. In fact, no, uh, I, from not the beginning just this of government. 90s, I'm, yes. what we have seen, the new... Uh, reform process and all that. And I can tell you this is not specific to India. Globally, uh, the trade union movement uh, has taken time to adjust itself to the situation. And now uh, this entire paradigm has entered a phase whereby we are finding that uh, increasing burden on the working class is actually leading to huge uh, uh, response and uh, a, a revolt kind of a situation. In our country also, the response by the trade union movement cutting across political lines, I think, uh, also reflects the changing mood. I won't say that uh, uh, it has weakened. Uh, initially, yes, it took uh, some time to adjust to the new uh, reality, new composition, recomposition of the working class, where increasingly people were in the unorganized sector. In the organized sector also increasing amount of contractualization was there. But now I think uh, they have also adjusted. And I think uh, it is unity of the uh, trade union movement uh, uh, which is being forged to respond to the new situation. Okay. Uh, Venkatesh, you, know, you, you heard three very interesting viewpoints. Though from different, uh, you know, backgrounds, trade unions, uh, but they seem to be converging in their views about what, what the problem is. Now, what are the solutions? Do you think the trade unions are ready with the solutions to these problems which they are facing? And do you think that the in the new environment where the private sector is playing a huge role, we have been seeing, do you think the Indian trade unions are really capable of adapting to it? No, I think strategically, as Nilotpal has said, 
uh, though a little late, the Indian trade union movement as the trade union organizations across the globe. They have realized that uh, they have to have new strategies. Yes. And uh, I think the February strike is a major beginning. But then, if you look at the larger context, what has happened is that there was a period in Indian history, Indian political history, when trade union organizations dictated policy. They had a major say in policy formulation right. and policy direction. That has completely been lost. I mean, essentially because of the, the policies of globalization and liberalization. And some of the largest trade union organizations are led by political parties, which are actually sabotaging <laughs> the, the, the thrust of the trade union movement, right. the trade union rights, and uh, uh, the general uh, welfare of the working class. So th there is a dichotomy there. I mean, these organizations are part of a larger political organizations, which have been systematically trying to sabotage the working class rights. Absolutely. And uh, how is it possible to evolve a policy intervention when you have political masters like this? That's a fundamental question. I think you've made a very interesting point there. <coughs> we will take, take up this uh, point about whether trade unions, you know, with, with their affiliations to the various political parties is something which can bring about a change in their strategies. We'll look at this issue as, uh, but we need to go into a short break now. Please keep watching, we'll be back very soon. Welcome back. We are discussing today on the International Labor Day the challenges being faced by the Indian trade unions and how they are preparing themselves to adapt to the changing environment. Mr. Kuntia, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kuntia, uh, yes, Venkate uh, Venkatesh, Venkatesh Ramakrishnan. I know, I know. What he, he, point, no, no, I'll, let, me, let, 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 me, let me finish my question. He has raised a very important and very in interesting issue. He says that you know, if if the trade unions continue to get be affiliated to these political parties, which are which are actually sabotaging what all what all your you trade unions are trying to do, is this time for all trade unions to rethink about its affiliations? I think uh, I do not agree with him because agar aap dekhiyega, in Europe the trade union movement started after the industrial revolution. But in India, the trade union movement started along with our freedom struggle. And at what point of time, the trade unions also, they are fighting against the British <coughs> dictatorship, against the British-led industry, just India company-led unions, so that the trade unions also, along with the freedom struggle, they have a contribution in the freedom struggle also. Okay. So in, in, in other part of the world also, if you go to Australia, German, USA, UK, so trade union also, they have a direct link with politics and you cannot just debar the trade unions not to have any affiliation or link with political parties. But that's okay. The question, but the yes, question is, yes. now in India also, the trade union issues, the, the worker issues, at the time when it is required, whether they are united or not, whether they are unitedly also facing the challenge or not, that is the issue, I think, in India that has been seen that political affiliation or political link has not become a barrier for the trade un unity. And so that, I think I do not agree on this point. Rather, the uh, trade unions before till till date we are not very much interested or not able to organize the unorganized workers i think that was the weakness and now the central trade union, all central trade unions are trying to organize unorganized workers i think that will give more strength to trade union and trade union can also play an, an important role in the government policy formulation okay uh, mr rai no, he, he says that, that, what is your view on this? Political affiliations. I totally agree with Bengtis. Because BMS is an independent trade union. We have but no we all, it, it, it is One supposed minute. to be, but you know, we, popularly per, it's perceived as being close to the Bharatiya Janata Party. No, BJP. no, it is, it is absurd. It is totally absurd. We have no affiliation, we have no inclination, we, have, we criticize BJP on so many matters. Openly we criticize. Others cannot do. It is 100 percent true that till the affiliation of the trade union with the political party, trade union cannot survive. 
from you want to survive the trade union no no from that angle also i no, 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 see you, you please please <laughs> hear me that angle also you, please see hear me because i did not congress i did not you are a congress mp <laughs> it is a question of policy no trade union should be affiliated with any political party it is a question of policy and it is sorry states but it is a very interesting that in spite of the fact that the political parties had affiliation with various trade unions we all trade union came together that is a uh, that very is a, miracle thing the, okay nilotpal i think you, you, uh, you are you see your party and the c2 are very very closely <coughs> interlinked i think i think uh, that is where uh, the role of the trade union uh, leadership and the trade union membership uh, becomes very important you see while individuals may be uh, members of a political party or even represent that political party in the parliament and so on and so forth but at the same time so far as their trade union activity how independent they can be i mean in all fairness to my good friend kunti aji and uh, others uh, i must say that there was tremendous pressure and of course there is a uh, conflict of interest conflict often. of interest is uh, obvious but, but 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 the point is today that is what i was saying therefore the the pace of adjustment was little slow but now that uh, grassroots level pressure because you see workers are really having a very very bad time because yes. of the overall policies Absolutely. and and the kind of discontent it is generating it is also pressurizing uh, their leadership irrespective of their political inclinations to come together and wage this united struggle okay venkatesh no you know you, you kicked up quite a bit of air uh, it's, it's quite interesting but do you think that you know uh, this disaffiliation is possible at all do mr rai says that he is disaffiliated completely is nothing to do with the no, bjp no no if you if you ask for the you see in case of intuc also the intuc is not affiliated to congress so disaffiliation does not arise <laughs> okay i mean that's that's what you would like to believe but you know the popular perception is not that you know you can dis you have you are disaffiliated from the congress yes venkatesh uh, no for no, no, this no, no, for, for the purpose of the affiliation i made it clear I N T U C has no affiliation with Congress. Okay, okay. I may I may okay. have the affiliation as a member of Parliament. Okay, okay. No, while technically that may be true, the fact remains that you know that there are ideological affiliations that all these trade unions have. Uh, again, technically it may be possible for all trade unions to come together and you know have uh, as we did, as, have, we, as we saw in February. Yeah. But whether ultimately this can have the kind of policy level impact that. trade unions used to have in the 60s and 70s right that's a very important question no in here here i would like to say one thing very clear you see it is it is wrong to portray as the failure of the trade union movement to impact the policy you see the government's entire paradigm has shifted not only here in india but, but all over was... i mean i mean they are not the welfare state or not the nation state which we knew which we, which we, uh, I, i mean all over the world absolutely. therefore their their no, no. entire Nilotpal. role is limited to promoting the market Nilotpal. They, they, therefore let, let us shift i want to shift a little bit towards the what the present situation is mr kuntia there are we are reading reports about you know the the, the industry organizations the major industry organizations are also realizing that maybe they should also you know have some kind of a Uh, arrangement or uh, you know with with the trade union uh, trade union trade unions so you think that in the in the coming days there will be better coordination and understanding between the labor trade unions as well as the, the major industry organizations and you think that the unorganized the, the major unorganized force which are which the all you trade unions are now trying to bring into the into your fold that will that will make an impact on the way the industry will look at the trade unions i think uh, that is also required uh, at the present for our country that is the requirement of the country in order to make our country competitive to compete with america japan and china like other countries but there is two things one thing is the employer must also realize that they have to give the minimum benefit like the wages like social security service security medical benefit which are the minimum requirement right on the other hand also i do agree fully the workers also 
should try to increase the individual productivity of the workers and the work culture also should be changed to cope with the situation. It is not one side thing. If both the side also realize an employer will be prepared to have a dialogue on the table and give the minimum benefit, implement the statute of the country, I think the situation should also develop in our country as it is happening in other countries. But, and okay. but Kuntia ji, how do, you, how do you explain the situation that in the last 20 years, the labor share in the GDP has fallen from 30% to 20% and the profit share of the owners has gone up from 20% to 60 percent. Okay. That 9 is to 1 shift in favor of the uh, profit makers. Profit makers. Mr. Mr. Rai. So Mr. That, is, that is okay. Mr. That Kuntia, is, I do agree. Mr. Mr. Kuntia, I disagree. Mr. Kuntia, let me get Mr. Rai in on this. Mr. Rai, you, yes. do you see a change in, in the attitude of the, of, the, of, the, of the industry, of the employers? Is, is, is there some change happening? Because I have been reading in, in the recent past, the employers met in Calcutta and you know all these major uh, associations of the trade, industry and trade. They are also trying to you know, have some kind of understanding with the trade unions. Is there any positive change you, you notice? You know, first, up, first thing is this, that the saying that uh, uh, productivity of the labor has decreased, it is not fair. To all response, with all responsibility, I can prove that the productivity has increased and production has also increased. Workers realize because it is their question of survival. Yes. So it is, it, it is not good to say that they do not realize. But one thing has happened, and I must give respect to that new happening. Some chambers of commerce had started bilateral exactly. negotiation with the trade union. Right. It is a very good happening. SOCHAM, CII, Fiki. they have FIKI, they have called the meetings, the trade union, and they tried. Not only this, even ILO, yes. International Labor Organization has also called bipartitism. Right. In, the, in these process, if it succeeds, then a very good prospect is visualizing. Right. And now something uh, good will come. Because the trade unions are workers and the employers. They should negotiate directly. The only reason why I am saying that government since has given up every rights, they are doing nothing. That is why it is the only way that the uh, employers and the employees should sit together and sort out okay. the Okay, quickly. Do you think, is that the way out? Is that the solution? Employers, employ employees sit together and this new change which Mr. Rai is talking about in their attitude? I, 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 I think side? that is asking for a little too much because uh, the employers uh, understand that the government will go to whatever extent that is necessary uh, to uh, appease them, to, to promote them. So in that kind of a situation, unless the workers unite and put pressure, I think uh, a change of heart on the part of the employers, I mean, though there may be some positioning and all that, uh, it's difficult to imagine. Mantesh? Absolutely. The positioning has also happened because in the last 20 years of intense liberalization and globalization, you have come to a situation which has become evident that the rights of the working class is being trampled upon globally, and movements like Occupy Wall Street have emerged out of it. And there is a widespread protest across the globe, which is, of course, and I think the February agitation is also a reflection of that. So both the policymakers who have been pushing this idea, as well as the corporates, have been uh, forced or constrained to make some positions, some compromise positions, uh, in order to kind of quell this, this rising. This, this rising. Uh, yeah. Mr. Kuntia, do you think these are, the, your government, you're a Congress MP, you know, you're very much part of the government, you've been, you've been witnessing how the government has been reacting to all these uh, demands of the labor. Uh, you think that this is just positioning which, which we are witnessing now? Or, or as Mr. Rai says, that there is still, there is hope. Rai is, Mr. Rai is quite optimistic actually, showing some optimism at least. No, bipartite negotiation is always good. But I think government also from their side, like Mahatma Gandhi National Employment Guarantee Program, like as a, some of the legislations also, they are bringing to give employment 
uh, to the organic sector. There is also legislation, welfare board for organic sector workers, for building construction workers. But even though in building construction workers, we have around 8,000 crores no, all no, over Mr. the country. Mr. Mr. But Mr. We, because, because of the non-implementation of the welfare board, people are not getting the benefit. Mr. Kuntia, so I I have my direct question to you very quickly. You, do you see hope in, in your government responding to the demands of the workers, in, especially in the context of the way you, all the unions have unified in the last year or so? I think there was also a discussion with the government, with the ministerial group, and I am very much hopeful that government also will discuss with the national unions and also try to resolve the issue through discussion, whatever okay. is possible, government will definitely try to okay. discuss with you. Okay, on that note, we need to end. The fact is that there is, it's a long haul for the trade unions. It's going to be uh, you know, worth watching in the coming weeks, months and years, how, how and if the trade union movements will, will regain that glorious days which they had seen in the 60s and 70s. Thanks to all my guests, Mr. R.C. Kuntia, Nilotpal Basu, Mr. Bajanath Rai and Venkatesh Ramakrishnan. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on the big picture same time tomorrow.